Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and you're watching SoCal Disney Dad. Today we are going to talk about the difference between the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. We're going to look at what is unique about them and which one of the two of them is better if you only have a single day to spend. So let's get going. We're gonna start off with the animals at the safari park. Specifically, what are the unique animals that you can only see at the safari park that are not at the San Diego Zoo? First off, we have the wallabies, which is up in the Walkabout Australia area. In fact, most of these unique animals at the safari park are gonna be there up in Walkabout Australia. But wallabies, you will not find wallabies at the San Diego Zoo. There is a kangaroo there, but he's pretty hard to find. And these wallabies are gonna be more accessible for you. And the next thing is the platypus. In fact, we have the only platypus outside of Australia. The San Diego Zoo Safari Park is the first place in the entire world that Australia has lent a platypus to. So that's pretty exciting. We have one right here in San Diego. Next is the Matchy Street Kangaroo. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. He is a unique little guy, the Matchy Street Kangaroo. And then the cassowary. Now, cassowary is a really, really big bird, kind of like in the uh, emu and ostrich family. Pretty interesting bird. I think they're kind of scary looking, but they're also a quite colorful and beautiful bird. Just past Walkabout Australia is Condor Ridge, and over in Condor Ridge, aside from condors, which they also have at the San Diego Zoo, is these bighorn sheep. The bighorn sheep are only here at the safari park. You won't find any at the zoo. That's because the safari park focuses on mostly an African safari type feel. So many of these animals are going to be at home on open barren plains. The final unique animal at the safari park that we have is the bald eagle, the North American bald eagle. While there are eagles at the San Diego Zoo, they don't have any bald eagles. You'll only be able to see the bald eagle here in the safari park, and they're only there because they cannot be released to the wild. Moving over to the San Diego Zoo, there are some unique animals there, and we'll also start in Australia with the Tasmanian Devil. The Tassie is unique to the San Diego Zoo. Over in the urban jungle, just outside of the Australian area, we actually have an Australian animal. It's kind of like it belongs in both, but we have some koalas. Then we have a hippo. I know they're kind of hard to see, not the best footage of the hippos for you, but we do have some hippos. You won't find any hippos at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, but you will at the zoo itself. We have some African penguins as well, which is in part of the new Africa Rocks exhibit. San Diego Zoo is also home to lots and lots of reptiles like snakes. There are no snakes at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. And a newer exhibit at the San Diego Zoo is the Komodo Dragon exhibit. This is an awesome exhibit with two Komodo dragons. You absolutely must go check them out if you're at the San Diego Zoo. Brand new exhibit called Komodo Kingdom. We also have some polar bears at the San Diego Zoo. You won't find any polar bears at the Safari Park. In fact, the polar bear that used to be at SeaWorld San Diego got moved to Pittsburgh. And so the only place to see polar bears in San Diego is actually at the San Diego Zoo. So let's move away from talking about the animals now to talking about the size of the park. The San Diego Zoo Safari Park is massive. It is 1,800 acres, which is like two square miles, though all of that is not walkable. Mostly it's just exhibit. Uh, they do have a tram ride, which we'll talk about later, that takes you around a large portion of that. Um, but there is more walking to be done at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park than at the zoo. Thankfully, it's mostly flat or easy inclines, whereas the zoo can be quite steep. Moving over to the zoo, the zoo, the San Diego Zoo, is 100 acres, but with a lot of steep inclines up and down. They do have an elevator right through the center of the area, but for the most part, many of the paths and trails have no climbing aids. So if getting up and down steep hills is difficult for you, then the zoo may not be the best for you. Now, you can rent scooters, and you can also only go downhill and then take the elevator back up and then go down and then take the elevator back up. That is something that you can do, but it is a lot easier to walk around the park if you're able to do hills both up and down easily enough. 
The next thing to talk about is parking, and I don't have a whole lot of footage here for the safari park, but the safari park costs $15 to park there. That's opposed to the San Diego Zoo, which has free parking because it's part of the Balboa Park complex, and Balboa Park offers free parking to all guests, so the San Diego Zoo has free parking as well. Now let's talk about some of the activities that they're there to do. Let's start at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Here we have the Roar and Snore Campground, which is a special campground where you can stay in the zoo, which is pretty neat. There are also some tree climbing trails. They haven't reopened yet post COVID, but they, they do have them. And there is the Balloon Safari, which costs $20 per person. You can go up in this giant hot air balloon. I have never done it, but you can see that expansive view that the hot air balloon takes you up over. Gorgeous, gorgeous views of the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Next, we have the Cheetah Safari, which is a special cheetah run that they have. The cheetahs run up and down the path over here, and that's something that anybody can see, but it is specific to a time of the day, so you need to plan that accordingly. There's also the Flightline Safari, which is a paid experience. This is a zip line. They have a large zip line that goes over most of the park, uh, and that's where you're gonna, you know, that's what you're paying for. But they also have a smaller zip line where you buy tickets, and that's like a testing ground to make sure that you're comfortable with it. The San Diego Zoo Safari Park also has a petting zoo that recently reopened. You can go in there and pet some goats and um, meet them and that sort of thing there. They're pretty fun. Then there's the lorikeet safari, which costs $8 a person and gives you some up-close encounters with lorikeets. You get little cups of food and the lorikeet will jump on your hand as they eat right out of your hand. It's a totally awesome experience and totally worth the $8. I've done it before. It's amazing. There are some more expensive tours like the cart safari, which costs upwards of $80 to $100 a person. And these give you more personal up-close tours of animals like you see the rhinos over there. They have other things that they go and they show you as well. You can check those out on their website. In addition to paid activities, there's also some free ones like going to the kids play areas. The kids play area at the San Diego Zoo was completely ripped out in uh, anticipation of the new children's zoo which is not yet open so can't really talk about that but here at the safari park they still have many playgrounds that are open in fact there are two notable playgrounds that my children like to hang out in there's the one up by the tiger trail and then there is one over called the Mawaza Woods. This is a newly updated play area. In fact, it used to be better. They've, they've kind of dumbed it down. They've made it a little bit safer. Uh, they've taken away a lot of the things that uh, I guess kids used to get injured on. And for liability purposes, they just put in this really, really tame play area. But my kids love it just the same. And the final thing at the Safari Park is the Benbow Amphitheater, which is home to the Bird Show. That Bird Show has not come back post-COVID. While we're talking about shows that haven't come back, over at the San Diego Zoo, we have the Wedge of Fourth Bowl, which is a place where they do their show, and it is not back either. Over in the Urban Jungle, there's Urban Jungle Adventures, which is a special paid activity that you can do where you can feed a giraffe. It's a pretty neat experience that you should give a try one of these times that you visit. Also, as I briefly mentioned, the Denny Sanford Children's Zoo should be coming soon. There's not a whole lot that we know just yet about the Denny Sanford Zoo, but when it gets here, it'll be awesome. Right here off to our left is Mowgli's 4D, a special show that you can go and see uh, over by the polar bears. Aside from a lot of extra paid tours, that is it for the main activities in the San Diego Zoo. So now we're moving on to rides. We have this bus tour, which used to cost, but now it does not. Anybody can ride it, so long as you have a single day ticket. And it is a double-decker bus that takes you around the entire zoo, giving you a guided tour and explanations of all the animals around the outside perimeter of the zoo. If you want to get another look at the San Diego Zoo that doesn't cost, but used to, we have the Sky Fari. Once again, if you have a single day ticket as of the time of this filming, you can get access to the Sky Fari. It's a sky bucket that takes you on a little cord over the San Diego Zoo and gives you excellent views from the sky. You can see lots of animal exhibits. You can see just how big the zoo is and you really can't see any of the animals from the Sky Fari, but you can see the zoo itself, which is a pretty great view and an awesome experience. And it also helps you get from one side of the park 
to the other. In addition to those two rides inside the park, we also have two rides outside the park. Now these are operated by Balboa Park. We have the Balboa Park Carousel, which costs $3 per ride. We also have the Balboa Park Railroad, which also costs $3 per ride. Moving over to the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, they also have a carousel, which costs $6 for unlimited rides. So you pay once and you can ride it over and over and over again, but I believe at $6 per person. So you would need to pay it as many times as people you have in your group. Then we have the Africa Tram, which is the most notable attraction at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. This is also free. There is an upgrade feature for you if you don't wanna wait in line, but that is the only thing that costs you get on the tram and it takes you around the safari, the primary safari of the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, which is great. It is a big loop. This is a 30 to 40 minute ride and it is well worth it. I always try to plan to ride this Africa tram. Even though I've ridden it so many times, I think it is worth a ride nearly every time you visit the safari park. It's so great and so enjoyable, so relaxing. You get to see so many animals. Moving away from rides, let's talk about food. At the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, we have the Mombasa Cooker, which has some unique food items. They have uh, tater tots along with these specialty chicken tenders, and they have unique types of items that you can get on the chicken tenders that you can't get in any other theme park that I have ever been to. Over at the Mawazo Kitchen, uh, they have your standard fare of uh, mostly burgers and chicken tenders. At Okavanga Outpost, they have a healthier fare. This is where you can get your uh, lettuce wrapped paninis, your cold cuts, and things like that. And at Thorn Tree Terrace, which is in the center area of the park, right next to all the shopping, that is where you can get some Chinese food. And they have some really great food there. I have never gone wrong at Thorn Tree Terrace. The final restaurant at the Safari Park that I want to call your attention to is the Watering Hole, which is a sit-down location where you need to make reservations, they give you a menu, you pick off the menu, they bring out your food, that sort of thing. And there are beautiful views of the savanna from the Watering Hole. They also have some really, really good food. Amy got a chicken salad and I got a barbecue sandwich. And while those two things may not sound special, they tasted so much better than the rest of the food in the park. It's pretty amazing. Moving over to the San Diego Zoo, we have Huame Cafe, which is in the valley between the two hills of the San Diego Zoo. And this is where you're gonna get your Chinese food. It's not as good as Thorn Tree Terrace in my opinion, but Thorn Tree Terrace is in the safari park and this is at the zoo. So if you've gotta have your Chinese fare, you can get that here at Huame Cafe. We also have Sabretooth Mexican Grill, which is over by the elephants. And this is of course where you're gonna get Mexican food. Now it's pretty slow service wise. I did not have the greatest experience, but the pork carnitas nachos that I got were amazing. I really, I want to go back there just to eat those nachos again. Then we have the sandwich company, which is going to be those cold cuts that we had over at the Safari Park. They have something very similar at the San Diego Zoo, but the sandwiches are so much better at sandwich company than in the Safari Park. We also have the Busy Bee Cafe, which is behind the Sky Fari. This is a newer location that they recently opened. They have pizza as well as burgers and these special honey buns because it's the Busy Bee. They locally source honey and they created these homemade honey buns, which are really, really good. And you definitely have to give it a try. Closing out our food here at the San Diego Zoo is their sit down restaurant, which is called Albert's. Again, you have to make reservations. You go inside, they seat you at a table, hand you a menu, and the food there is to die for. Absolutely the best food at the San Diego Zoo. Again, all I got was just a burger, and Amy got like a uh, sandwich. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. I'm sorry, I'm pretty bad with things like this, but you can see that sandwich there, and it was so very, very good. Well, that is it for our time here talking about the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. You can see the differences between those. Is there a clear winner of which one is better? Personally, I don't think so because I like both equally as good. But when I get asked the question all the time of which one should I go to? I only have one day. 
If you have never been to the San Diego Zoo before, I always recommend the zoo. The zoo is going to be the best for you in terms of seeing the most animals, the most unique animals, the most animals in general. It is also the most shaded and the least amount of walking, but there's not as much to do there overall, but they do have more rides available to you than the safari park does. The safari park just has more paid activities, more unique things that you could do there. Um, but I do love the safari park probably even more than the zoo personally. I love going on the Africa tram. It's just such a huge highlight for me. Of course, I've been on the bus tour too, but it's just not as exciting as the Africa tram to me. Uh, so, you know, take it for what you will. Go to both. If you have the ability to go to both, absolutely do it and go to both. The only recommendation that I would have is not to do the safari park in the summer. It gets very, very hot and that can be a little unbearable because it's more inland, whereas the zoo is on the coast, so the, and because of all the foliage and things, the temperatures stay a bit more moderate there compared to the safari park, which can get pretty hot. If you have any additional questions for me that you'd like me to answer about the San Diego Zoo Safari Park or the San Diego Zoo, I'm totally happy to answer those for you as well. Just drop them down in the comment. I respond as quickly as possible. Uh, as soon as I notice that you've, you've commented, I make it a point to respond to everybody. So no question is, to, is dumb or silly. Um, I'm happy to answer them and happy to help in any way that I can. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this about the San Diego Zoo or Safari Park, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you again next time.